Hello world, my name is Viktor Engelmann and in this video I'm going to explain to you how a processor works. Um, now this video is largely based on the video series by Ben Eater. So if you're really interested in the topic, I would highly advise you to watch his videos instead uh, because he goes much deeper into the topic than I want to go here. Um, you know, he actually builds a CPU out of primitive parts and explains each and every wire that he uses and uh, he actually programs it. So, um, but uh, yeah, his video series is, I don't know, uh, five hours or even more. And uh, yeah, if you're not that interested in the topic, then uh, you might not want to spend this much time. And yeah, this is why I'm making this video here as kind of a summary of his videos. Okay. So if, if you're not that interested in the topic, then uh, you can still get a rough idea of how a CPU works. Okay. Now, the main thing in a CPU is the so-called bus. And yeah, a bus is just a bunch of wires. Here I have eight wires. Um, yeah, the number of wires is uh, the number of bits of the CPU. You know, an eight-bit CPU would have eight wires. Um, a sixteen-bit CPU would have sixteen wires. Thirty-two-bit CPU would have thirty-two-bit wires, and sixty-four-bit CPU would have sixty-four wires. And um, yeah, this is kind of like the main communication line between the different parts of the CPU. So yeah, the other parts of the CPU, for example, a register, like the register A, um, then connects to this bus by having its input pins connected to the different wires of the bus. And uh, yeah, since this would be too convoluted, I will just uh, connect one red wire to all of them. Okay, so one red wire means uh, actually eight wires connected to uh, different uh, wires of this uh, bus. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the register A. If you're interested in how a register itself works, um, that's just a sequence of latches. And um, yeah, if you want to know how a latch works, uh, you can watch the video by Ben Eater again. He also has a video about latches and uh, other primitive parts. Okay, now another register for B. Okay, and um, yeah, now you can um, now A and B can communicate with each other by, um, for example, A can now output its data to the bus, and B can read its data from the bus, and like that you can transfer the data from A to B, and yeah, just to coordinate that, um, you would have some control pins, so. Um, so if you put electricity on the first pin, uh, then this uh, latch will store the data that it's reading from the bus. And when you put electricity on the other pin, it outputs its data. So if you put electricity here and here, this effectively copies the data from A to B. Okay. Um, yeah, but um, this is not actually how you would do it in reality because uh, You might want to read data from A or B um, uh, apart from the bus. So what you could do is you put another chip in between. Um, so this output pin basically uh, 
disappears. This is now a pin of this additional chip. So A and B now always output their data. And uh, this additional chip will just uh, um, stop this data from going to the bus um, unless this pin is set. Okay. And the reason why you would want to do that is so that you can get the data out of A and B um, outside of the bus communication. So you could put an adder here, so something that adds binary numbers. And um, you could then also connect this output of A to the adder and the output of B to the adder. And um, so, so that the adder can always uh, know what is in A and B. And it can always have an up-to-date uh, sum of A and B. And, uh, And controlled with another control pin, uh, you can tell it to output the sum to the uh, to the bus. Okay, so that uh, so this adder that always contains a plus b, and uh, if you would now put electricity on this pin and this pin, um, this would effectively then transfer the the sum of a and b uh, to b. Okay, so this would be like uh, the assembler instruction for add a to b, you know, in GNU assembler syntax. And yeah, now you only need to decide uh, when you want to uh, put electricity on which of these um, of these pins to actually control what the CPU does. And um, yeah, Ben Etel does that by having an EE prom. That's a chip that uh, can store data, a lot of data with addresses. And yeah, then you can just uh, encode the, um, the values for these pins as data inside this prom. Okay, so let's say We connect the output of this prom to these inputs. Um, okay, I, I don't want to draw this completely because uh, it would be uh, too convoluted. Uh, I will just address them 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 1, 2, 4, 16 um, and um, yeah now uh, if we want to copy uh, data from A to B uh, yeah we need to put electricity on line 2 and 8 so for example we could store the number 10 as uh, at, at address 0 and then if we, um, if we tell it to output address 0, it will then put electricity on number 2 and number 8, you know, because 10 is in address 0. And then that put electricity on 8 and 2. So this outputs A, reads B. So this, uh, this value 0 would then correspond to uh, move A to B in GNU assembler syntax again. So the opcodes of your processor are basically just the addresses of these micro instructions inside this EE prom here. So if you do it like this, then zero would be the opcode of the move A to B instruction. And yeah, now you only need to uh, 
uh, you need to put um, addresses in here to actually control what the processor does. Okay, and uh, that's basically running the program. You know, throwing instructions into this uh, prom here, and uh, or this EE prom, and yeah, you can do that. Um, using an, another register uh, that holds the current instruction. And you would also have a counter, you know, because the same instruction might require uh, different steps. Okay, so, uh, so this, um, this register holds the current instruction and this counter Um, counts the the number of steps between uh, this instruction, okay? And uh, the outputs of these together form the uh, the address that we put into the prom. And yeah, now we now we can connect this instruction register to the bus. Control it with uh, one of these wires. Uh, we can control the counter. You know, you know when when an ins instruction is done, we need to reset the counter so uh, so that we start at the first uh, micro instruction of the next instruction. Um, and yeah, now we only need to get the instruction into this instruction register. Um, and um, yeah, you can do that. Um, I mean, uh, in Ben Eater's videos, he actually builds some uh, memory into the processor. Um, I mean, that that makes sense. You know, pr uh, processors actually do that. Uh, they have uh, processor caches. Um, but uh, yeah, generally speaking, you could uh, have another register for the instruction pointer. Connect it to the bus. have some more wires to control it and um, yeah now you can uh, for example uh, read some data from wherever you know it could come from the adder or where wherever um, but you can tell it to read its data and that would correspond to a jump instruction in assembler you know writing to this instruction pointer um, corresponds to a jump and um, yeah otherwise uh, to execute any instruction you first need to fetch it from the memory and to do that you output the instruction pointer to the bus and then talk to some uh, bus controller um, to output this data to uh, to the main board and yeah, basically tell the main board, hey, give me the uh, the RAM content at this point, okay? And then when the main board has uh, gotten this uh, data, so the next instruction from the from the RAM, it uh, would feed it back into this uh, bus controller, and uh, then you could control it with maybe yet another pin um, to let the data through and then store it in the instruction register. Reset the counter so that uh, you start at the zeroth step of this uh, next instruction. Um, by the way, um, the data inside this prom here um, is called microcode. Um, you might have heard that name before. Um, you could also call it the firmware of the, uh, of the processor. Um, 
but what it really does is it it really only maps an instruction and different steps of the same instruction to different wires that it needs to put electricity on okay and uh, you also need another pin um, going to the instruction pointer because you wouldn't take a normal register for this you know um, because uh, yeah think about it if you uh, if you fetched an instruction okay it's now in the instruction here and you execute it uh, the instruction pointer hasn't changed so if you then um, output this pointer to the bus to get the next the next instruction from the memory um, yeah if this instruction pointer hasn't changed uh, in the meantime then uh, you will get the same instruction again okay so uh, you would uh, do the same thing again and again and again and again and never uh, advance in your program so you need a counting register instead um, which has an additional pin and um, yeah for uh, for jump instructions you write to this instruction pointer directly but for normal instructions at the end of the instruction you would uh, put electricity on that one pin that would uh, then advance this uh, pointer and then when you request that uh, address from the memory then you get the next instruction so now you are uh, actually advancing through the program if you do that and yeah that's basically ben eater's cpu right there i mean um, he has some additional stuff um, he has a display down here where he can display some number and um, he has some a lot of stuff over here that has to do with memory because uh, yeah, as I said, he has some built-in memory, and uh, so so he doesn't have to bother with external devices uh, and communicate with them through some controllers. So he has just some built-in memory, and as I said, it's it makes sense. You know, processors actually do have caches. So, um, but um, yeah, apart from that, this is basically Ben Eater CPU you're seeing here, and um, yeah. Uh, I think this really breaks a CPU down to an understandable uh, level, I think, because, um, I mean, registers are quite simple. They are just a sequence of latches. An adder is something quite simple. It's a sequence of full adders, and full adders are composed of two half adders, and uh, half adders are quite simple. Uh, counters, counting registers, they are all quite simple, EE prompts. Uh, are quite simple so um, so I think this is really a level um, on which a, a processor becomes really understandable and yeah if you're interested um, Ben Eater also has uh, videos about uh, latches about adders about counters so um, he even breaks it down further than that um, he even uh, I mean he breaks these things down to uh, logic gates you know and or and not or NAND and XOR, these, these typical logic gates. Um, but he even breaks them down into transistors. And uh, yeah, transistors are really the, the lowest level that at least we as uh, computer scientists are interested in because uh, yeah, a transistor has a certain behavior, but that behavior actually comes from uh, chemical properties of the materials that they are uh, composed of so uh, they don't break down further into logical parts okay so uh, below the transistor you're talking about chemistry not about computer science anymore okay but uh, yeah anyhow uh, this is all i wanted to show you today if you like this video like it share it subscribe or um, yeah actually if you like this video go and watch ben eater's videos like them share them subscribe to him uh, and yeah, see you next time.